End Time Ministries International Bible University is the premier Bible teaching university, graduating students for 50 years and discipling, equipping, and commissioning them into their callings. EMIBU has been established by Dr. Ken and Lorella Meyer with Dr. Joseph Nasrallah as academic dean. Our accrediting body is the largest Christian accreditor in the world, giving you the opportunity to study and earn your degree from anywhere in the world with our online curriculum. Whether you are a new student embarking on your first year of study or a minister of many years who is looking to return back to the classroom, with EMIBU, you can fast track your success. Enroll today and get started on earning your degree in associates, bachelor's, master's, or doctorate programs in a wide variety of theologically based Holy Spirit-inspired and Christ-centered studies. Enrollment is easy. Simply go to universityontheair.org. On the menu, click Applying to the University. Fill out and submit our one-page questionnaire, and our registrar will process your application and contact you to complete the enrollment process. Affordable, effective, practical and convenient, Christian education is now available to you. Put faith in your future and enroll in EMIBU today. God bless you as you have turned in to the University for the Nations End Time Ministries International Bible University. I am Dr. Lorella Meyer and I am thrilled that I get an opportunity by God's grace to talk to you about his wonderful love. And with me, we have a wonderful guest. She was here last week, so I certainly wanted her to be here this week. And her name is Dr. Stella Davis. And we both are teachers, ministers, counselors. Whatever God can use us, that's what we want to do. And so we want to be able to bless you and help you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We were discussing about suffering. And the, even the Apostle Paul knew what it was to suffer. He said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time shall not even be worthy. Worthy. When, when it comes to to the things of the Lord, for the Lord will count it all joy, even in his own walk. Because we started out with Psalm 22, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It, he actually said that from the cross, and this was prophesied that he would do that. And so we're talking about the sufferings at this present time. And did you want to comment on that, Dr. Stella? Yes, I would. Thank you so much for having me. This is such an honor to be here with you today, Dr. Lorella, and I'm just thrilled, and I know that it was God that brought us together. Oh, amen. It was the Holy Spirit, amen. and here we are today having a wonderful time talking about the things of God, and yes. so thank you for inviting me to be You're a part right. of your show. Yes, you know, uh, in James, uh, it says, count it all joy when we fall into diverse tests, trials, and temptations, knowing this, that the trying of our faith works patience, and let patience have her perfect work, that we may be entire wanting nothing. So he said that we are to act like it's joy. It may, it may not be joy when you're going through tests, trials, and tribulations, as we all will and have and will continue to, but he said act like it is, because he said that it's trying it's the trying of our faith and we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of not, things not seen and he said without faith it's Im impossible to please him and that's how you know we contact God and that's how we move forward and the things of God is by acting on the word which is faith faith is acting on what we believe so when we're going through those fiery tests trials and tribulations he said count it all joy yes and he said that when we count it all joy he said that it's the trying of our faith that works patience let patience have her perfect, perfect work, work that we may be entire 
wanting nothing. Lacking that we're nothing. maturing and lacking nothing because of the faith that we apply to every area of our lives. So, And in these days, particularly, the Word of God is so important because it's the Word that builds our faith in the Word of God. And faith comes by hearing. <laughs> blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. After righteousness. And for they shall be filled. And see, the Word and the Holy Spirit, they agreed. Yes. But in we're talking about there's a difference of the sufferings that the Lord brings us through because we have hope. But the sufferings of this world yes. are devastating that the Christian has the only answer. That's right. And We're the so, light and the salt. <laughs> definitely. So you and I have seen many changes in the world's philosophies. Yes. And even in America, as we see two political parties, uh, I'll just take, for example, the Democratic Party. Party and Jesus was neither a Democrat nor a Republican. He just loved people. If I was to vote for president, let's and just like they wanted the Lord Jesus to reign at that time, but that's not His will. But there's there's a concept He wants us to wants us to get here. The sufferings. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time. What there are people that go through tremendous sufferings. Yes. Like, number one, our Lord Jesus for Absolutely. the sufferings that he had on the cross. And, and, and he paved the way and showed us how, but that could not, we could not endure such a thing without the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh. That is for sure. But it talks about the world waxing worse and worse. That's right. And now we're seeing, uh, since, um, since even the 50s, we begin to see a downgrade of, of the moral fabric of our nation. Absolutely. And six means the number of man. That's when the drug culture really came in. Mm -hmm. And it began to deceive a lot of people and a lot of young people because many at that time were also very legalistic. Yes. And legalism, you and I both have seen legalism kills. That's the, right. The, word, the, the Bible tells us about that. Right. That the word kills it, it when it's not anointed. The letter kills. The letter, the spirit yeah, the letter of the word. Life. Thank you for uh, clarifying that. Yes. Kills, but it's the spirit that gives life. That's right. And so what happened? Uh, young people were began to s reject God when they saw a lot of legalism. Yes. And so you had what you call the hippie culture. Oh yes. And so that there was, was in a the 60s. 60s, and then there was the great move of God called yes. the Jesus Movement. Yes. And I think they recently did a movie on that a couple of months back. Uh -huh. But that was the greatest move of the Lord mm -hmm. since, uh, since the United States had been birthed uh, concerning young people. So this is what the, the Bible historians say. So, but what the next greatest move of the Lord, I believe, is going to involve young people. Oh, yes, absolutely. And why would we say that? Because the first thing that Hitler did in order to raise up a generation that would hate the Jews is that they were taken apart and indoctrinated. Mm. This is happening in America with, with this not knowing their gender. Right. And it's causing a lot of teen suicides. Yes, it is. And But now we're coming to, so the enemy is after our children That's mentally. Right. Yes. Spiritually, and, and, and now there's even a greater crisis than I, I had realized. And that was, uh, and I encourage everyone out there to, to absolutely see the movie. It is, it is so penetrating to the heart and the hope that God can give. Mm -hmm. And what a man was willing to risk his very life to save one child it was just absolutely miraculous right. it's called the sound of freedom when these little children uh, were freed from the slave trade and and also it says that the slave trade with children was even greater than the slave trade than when it was legal in our country mm. god hates that he absolutely hates that but these children that are missing from our borders and then all over the world. And they, they did a study and found out that the greatest came from America. So we mm. need to really pray for America yes. that our moral structure yes. and that our moral fiber be revived. There are many 
good people. And when I was thinking about Revelation 12 coming to pass, and to me, the typology of the woman that fled in the wilderness was a church, and there was a place prepared by God for her. And the earth opened, and to help her, the earth helped her. So there are good people that have morals, but they don't know the Lord Jesus. But God is going to be revealing himself. And so what we find here, there was a comparison of a hundredfold, to me, a hundredfold Christian who is, comes to the baptism of love. Uh -huh. A type of man that was so moved with compassion. Mm. It was a, it, it's a true story. It's oh. not any, nothing fake about it. Praise the Lord. And uh, how he was a believer and he was moved by, he was, a, uh, I believe, a, a policeman, a detective, whatever. And he was put on the pedophile uh, detail. And he thought, I can't even take this, not even for one week. And then I believe the man said, what if it was your daughter? And something hit his heart. And so how he was willing to risk his life, give up his job to trace down one little precious girl who was a, d a dad, this is a true story, hmm. who had t two darling children. The boy must have been about five, the girl maybe seven or eight. And they found this ad, and of course it's a poor country, uh, of little children being models, and we actually like children's clothing. And so he brought them to the studio, and he was told that to leave them there and to come back for them at a certain time. Well, when he came back at a certain time, they were gone. Mm. And but anyway, what I want you to see is that there was hope. God saw that they are God's children, and. There is a real cry in the nations today. And this, this very same psalm says, why do the heathen rage and, and imagine a, a vain thing? Well, what's happening? The heathen are those that are not believers in God. It's not necessarily a nation because Paul brought the gospel to the Gentiles and they were just as much uh, God's ch children as uh, the believing Jew. That's right. and, and, and so grace, where sin does abound, grace is so much more abound. I want you to see this movie. I want you to get a heart for children in these last days. Will you do that? And perhaps you've gone through suffering as a child, but there is hope for you. God will restore your worth. And I am going to have Dr. Stella lead you in a prayer that's going to bring restoration to your body, soul, and spirit that she amply taught a couple of days ago. Will you lead those that are watching all over the nations of the earth through yes. cross television, which we're very grateful for? Praise the Lord. Well, you know, let's just bow our heads and go before the throne. You know, the Bible says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise and to be thankful unto him and to bless and praise his holy name. Father, we're so grateful for your love, your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way, have your way in this time of prayer. We just thank you for every single individual that's under the sound of my voice today. Lord God, we thank you for your word that will not return void, but yes, it will Lord. accomplish that which you please, and it will prosper in the thing in which it is sent to do. And Father, we just thank you. We just lift up this nation to you. You said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves mm -hmm. and pray and seek your face, and, and you said you would hear our prayer, you would heal our land, and you would forgive our sin. Mm -hmm. So Father, we thank you that we lift up this nation to you today. We thank you, Father, for these United States of America, and we just pray for all the nations of the world. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father, for all of the children because you said in your word that you love the children and we are to be a blessing. We're blessed to be a blessing. We're to train them up in the way they should go. And you said when they're old, they will not depart from the word of God. So we lift up all of the children right now, all of the young people, the young adults. We pray a hedge of protection around mm. them. We thank you, Father, that there's no weapon formed against them that shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment shall be condemned. 
This is the heritage of the servants of the Most High God. So we pray for this next generation. We break and destroy every mm -hmm. generational curse over our children, our grandchildren, yes. our great-grandchildren. The next generation, Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that they're not confused about their gender. Mm -hmm. We take authority over that spirit right now. Mm -hmm. And we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus that you send the right spirit into these classrooms, the teachers, that this um, gender confusion, we break the power of it now, and we thank you, Father, that there is no confusion. You said whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Right. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So we take authority over it right now, the school system, the educational system. We pray, Lord God, that we are the salt, we are the light, and you said light dispels darkness. So we thank you, Father, that yes, we are Lord. the light of the world. You are the light of the world, but you place that light on the inside of us, and you've given yes, us a assignments you've given us the place to be in a classroom as a parent as a mother and as a father you said we are the ones to train up these children so we thank you father we pray right now over this drug war we mm. take authority over drugs and alcohol and nicotine yes. and pornography and abortion and all the things that the enemy would try to bring against our children and our young people yes so we pray against it now we take the axe to the root right now in the name of Jesus you said to bind the strong man so we bind the strong man yes. of drugs and alcohol and nicotine and also this uh drug the trafficking uh this uh trafficking of our young people right now in the name of jesus sex trafficking we take authority over that father and we take authority over this abortion yes and we pray right now in the name of jesus oh father you said in the last days you would pour out your spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters would prophesy your old men would dream dreams. Your young men uh, would see visions. So, Father, we thank you that your spirit is being poured out yes, upon Lord. this nation, upon the, the youth, upon the young people, upon the parents and the, the parents, Father. We pray, Lord God, that these parents will, will not be fearful of their children, but they will raise them and train them up in the way that they should go. Yes. And when they're old, they will not depart. So we pray over our nation right now. We thank you that we are a nation that loves God and that you said, if my people who are called by my name, mm. you said, humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from, from their, their wicked, wicked ways. ways. You said you would hear our prayer, heal our land, forgive our sins. So we thank you, Father, that our sins have been forgiven. You thank, we thank you, Father, that our sins have been remitted. Glory mm. to God. And we are the, those that are called to intercede, stand in the gap. Pull down the stronghold of the enemy. Yes. So we pull down every stronghold. We lift up the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that Jesus is Lord over all. And hallelujah. we just give you the praise. We give you the glory. Oh, and we hallelujah. give you the honor. And we stand in agreement. And we say amen. 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 And that was amen. powerful. Oh, thank you, Father. And you and might have been an abused abuse child. And you do not feel very good about yourself and in Psalm 22 even the Lord said he said um, uh, in verse 6 Psalm 22 verse 6 but I'm a worm and no man a reproach of me of men and despise of the people and so that's part of what happened on the cross but but he brought out that scripture feeling just like nothing feeling like there's no hope. That word was prophesied at least 10 centuries. It was 10 generations. So 10 generations between David and our Lord Jesus. So you don't feel very good about yourself. And you say, who cares if I'm hurting? And the enemy would get a hold of you and harden your heart. But see, God sees your lonely heart, your rejection. Amen. And he bore that pain. He took that pain of rejection. And in the last days, we were talking about the last days, God said he would gather the outcasts. You're feeling an outcast of Israel. The Lord wants to restore you to the wonderful person he's made you. Amen. And that restoration begins with looking at the cross that he bore all this for you, this sin, the heartache, the rejection. He did that for you. And he's alive forevermore. And he wants to send his spirit into your heart. Amen. So I want you to pray this prayer with me. 
And I know Dr. Stella agrees. Her heart is praying for you right now. You that are tossed, torn, and afflicted because of childhood abuse. Mm -hmm. I want you to just close your eyes. Just get real still. Seeing the cross, it's like God's arms are reaching out to you. And I want you to say, Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Cleanse me from every sin. Cleanse me from every sin. And from all of its effects of rejection. And all the effects of rejection. I renounce rejection. I renounce rejection. I believe you love me. I believe you love me. And that you gave yourself for me. And that you gave yourself for me. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I thank you for forgiving me of my sin. Of hatred because of rejection. Of hatred because of rejection. And of bitterness. And of bitterness. And unforgiveness. And unforgiveness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come in and restore my soul. Come in and restore my soul. My spirit and my body. My spirit and my body. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You made me a wonderful person. You made me a wonderful person. And I accept that right and now. And I accept that right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And, and so that's what I love about the Lord. He's so personal. He's so kind. He's so good. Yes. He's so nurturing. And he loves you with an everlasting love. My suggestion to you is to read Psalm 139. And perhaps as Dr. Stella gets it, because she taught so well on body, soul, and spirit, we just have a few minutes. But Psalm 139 says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm. And you know my thoughts. Amen. And Psalm will you please, actually, as you, re as you just maybe pick out a verse or two. Yes. Uh, Psalm 139, this is in the Amplified. It says, O Lord, you have searched me thoroughly and have known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, my entire life, everything I do, you understand my thought from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down. You are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Wow. Even before there is a word on my tongue, still unspoken behold oh lord you know it all and that's something yes so he knows he knew how the enemy came to destroy you through a perpetrator if you've been abused and that perpetrator could even be a, a relative of yours he knew that but one of the things that we, you have to know about our god not only does he restore you but he deals with that sin. He's the one that will judge that sin. Amen. And there have been a few that have actually turned around and truly repented of their sins. So just forgive. Just, just give it to God and let your my life move forward by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're coming to the end of our broadcast. And if there's anything we can do to help you and to pray for you, I want you to call my number, and Dr. Stella will give her number. My number is 805-825-7932, 805-825-7932. In Jesus' name, go ahead. Yes, thank you. You can reach me at area code 323-893-3380, or you can go to my uh uh, email and you can email me if you have a prayer request. I would love to pray with you, and that is Stella by Starlight. That is S T E L L A B Y S T A R L I T E at A T T dot net, and you can send your prayer request. And I would love to pray with you and pray for you. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you, make His face shine upon you, and give you His peace. The peace of God that passes all our natural understanding comes from God. Give you peace in the name of Jesus. God loves you. We love you. And that's the way it's going to be. God loves you and we love you. And that's for the world to see. Goodbye Amen. until next week.